Good morning and Merry Christmas. I trust that you had a great time with family and friends over Christmas. And if you happen to have been alone or just a bit shut in this time around, I just want you to know that God was with you. Think of Jesus when he was born, having to have traveled with his parents in mother's womb so many miles, ending up in the town of Naz in the town of Bethlehem from Nazareth. We need to think of that Christmas story, not just in terms of one night, but in event. Last Sunday, we talked about how God was weaving a tapestry, a history of human involvement in his design and plans for you and I, asking in certain individuals to be part of his intricate plan of salvation. He invites us, as it were, into that plan as well. He says, come ye, come ye. He invites us, all that may. And so we want to continue just looking at that Christmas story as we consider the wise men or magi who came from the East. They came approximately two years after the birth of Jesus Christ in that time period. And the reason I would say that is because when we read the Gospel of Luke and then back into the Gospel of Matthew, we see that Luke continues to tell us of events that transpired right after Jesus's birth. For example, we have in Luke telling us about how he was circumcised, given the name Jesus. That's eight days. And then a little bit later, when the time of purification came, they went to Jerusalem, and there they presented themselves with two small doves because they needed to make payment for the firstborn, according to the law. They went back to Bethlehem, and in Bethlehem, they moved from the stable to a house simply because the time for the census had passed. And so all of those people that had gathered in during that time that made it impossible for them to find residence had now moved on and gone back to their various locations of habitation. Joseph and Mary continued to live in Bethlehem. And they had moved from the stable to a house. And that's where we pick up the story. And the story is found in Matthew chapter 2, verse 1, and just kind of finishes at verse 12. So let's look at this story together. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem to Jay in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Now Herod the king had heard these things, was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. They said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, For thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over the place where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house where the young child with Mary, his mother, with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him, and they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed unto their own country 
another way. The story of Christmas is not just a one day event. And that talks about us as individuals. Everything that happens to us in life is not just a one day event. We have things that happen to us that lead up to events in our lives or lead up to certain high points in our lives. For example, marriage. We have that time before we get married where we prepare ourselves for the event of marriage. Even if you were to go for surgery, for example, there is a time of preparation, getting ready for it. And so even with Mary and Joseph and the story of Christmas, we have this time of preparation, this time of preparing. And in that story, these men came. We're not told how many. Many believe that there were only three simply because there were three gifts given. But that doesn't mean anything as far as the numbers that were actually there. It just says wise men or magi from the East. These men were consultants to their various governments and forms of government from whence they came. These were the men that were called upon by their own people to give them wise direction for life. They were astrologers. They looked to the stars to see what was happening. And astronomy and astrology in those days went hand in hand. And God caused something to happen in the heavenlies that was unusual, that caught their attention. A star. Jesus is called the morning star. The star of the east. And I kind of think that what they're seeing is God's voice through his creation. Speaking to us of the event of Jesus' birth miraculously. I'm not one of those that aspires to looking at the stars and saying, oh, it was this comet or that comet. I'm sorry, I, I, I just have a problem with that. Simply because of what it says here in the Word of God. It says, when they left Jerusalem, the star guided them and came to rest and shone its light specifically over a specific place. That tells me that this was supernatural, not natural in origin. And that's just like God, because he is a supernatural God. But these wise men also speak to me of the kinds of people that they're are on the earth. I see basically three kinds of people. We have the wise men. We have the scribes, those that know what is really going on, but fear keeps them. Intimidation keeps them from standing for the truth. And then you have those who stand against truth in all its forms, the Herods of the world. They like to say, there is no God but me. And then the only God you can trust in is yourself. This story tells us that we need to be careful who we listen to. Do we listen to God who created? Or do we listen to a man who uses fear and intimidation, who uses violence as a means of control. Who do we listen to? Who do we follow? This story teaches us that even at Christmas, 
The lines in the sands are drawn. We need to be like the wise men, listening to what God has done. Not being fearful, not being intimidated, not being unbelieving. These were wise men, men of repute, men who uh, were sages who spoke to kings and to kingdoms. These men worshiped Christ. These men acknowledged what God was doing. These men saw the supernatural and were willing to go out of their way in the pursuit of truth. And it really asks, leads me to ask the question at Christmas of us, are we the Herod? That's foolishness. God is dead. Are we like the scribes and the Pharisees? Oh, we need to be careful of what we say. You never know who we may offend. And if we give offense, how will that, how will the reaction be upon us and our families and stuff? Or do we become the wise men? The men who seek truth and are willing to allow God to speak to our hearts just as he did to these men. They were wise men. They followed God's direction. They didn't understand it as God's direction other than they came and they worshipped. They came and they saw the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. They went away satisfied, filled with joy in heart and mind, filled with peace that passes all understanding, filled with wonderment, at what God had done and has done. Is that how you feel at Christmas? Filled with wonderment? The story of Christmas is God's love story to us. Are we willing to engage? Are we willing to allow ourselves hear his small voice as he would say to us follow me let's pray father we thank you for your gift of love at christmas thank you for all that you've done for us i just pray oh god that you just bless each who have heard this message thank you lord for the great revelation that you have given May we be like the wise men, true seekers of truth, and allow you to speak to our hearts of you being truth. Because Jesus, you said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so Jesus in you, we see all that we need for life together with you. Help us to receive you as the wise men did with joy and anticipation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Merry Christmas.